Hey everybody, well, welcome. It's David R. Becker here on a Tuesday. Normally we're here on a Thursday, but um, this week I got a workshop down in Indiana, Goshen, Indiana, and it's gonna be a three-day workshop, so I'll be busy teaching down there. And so we're gonna do this today, um, tonight at 6.30, and we're gonna be doing a nice complex scene for you guys. I just put this in there really quickly. Um, I wanted to get this in every, I'm gonna try to do one every week. I did one last week. I was in Thousand Islands, and you saw me doing that boat scene, and so that was a lot of fun. And um, I do like doing the plein air ones, but this is a little bit more um, intimate, where I can actually show you a bunch more things and stuff inside the studio. Um, next week, I will be next Thursday. What's happening next Thursday? I just lost my thought. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, Dillman's is happening in about three weeks, and I think it is sold out. It's the um, water. It's the water media class that I'm doing there next week. Or no, in three weeks. And that's sold out, unfortunately, um, for you guys, I think. Um, I heard that it was sold out. Um, so uh, maybe next year. Uh, it is, I have been doing these um, workshops now live. I actually do enjoy them. And we're doing the very good with the social distancing and using the masks and everything. So it's a lot of fun um, getting back to doing the regular classes. Um, I have stopped doing my daily paintings on my website because I'm been away from home and so I haven't been able to chance to do that and if somebody buys them or um, if anybody buys my brushes I don't have time to sit there and send it to you so if anybody's still waiting for their brushes or their painting it'll be there hopefully soon because I just sent away a big order that yesterday um, let me get down to this painting and this painting today we're going to be doing is let's see what we got here we got hold on one second here where is that okay here's what we're doing today <laughs> So it is kind of complex. It is a scene um, from a vendor, a food vendor at night, and there's a little bit of smoke happening there. And so if you can see, I always take this to black and white. And so this is the black and white. And I notice this is the center of interest guy. And so what we're going to do, let's put that arrow up here so we can actually see it. <laughs> so here is the um, center of interest, and we're going to have him cooking this meal. <clears throat> and here's the color version. Again, you don't have to use the colors that you see, but um, excuse me for a second here. <laughs> Let me just take a little drink here. It's pretty warm in my studio right now. So anyways, so let's get back to the tabletop and just get started. <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, guys. Let's see if anybody here even listening. Maybe there's nobody even here. So um, oh, 10 of you are watching. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming back. And um, so what we're doing here is you can see I drew it up. And I put a little bit of masking fluid already down. I don't know if you can see this, but the masking fluid is down in the anywhere there's going to be a white area where I'm going to leave it white. Something like this where it's very complex, it's really good to use the um, masking fluid. And check out your masking fluid on your paper, the certain papers. Take it better than others. Um, so just watch out your masking fluid so it doesn't tear the paper. But um, the drawing I had done, I already went over with my needle rubber eraser like this to get away the... the um, graphite, which I normally do, take away some of the graphite, especially in the areas where you're going to keep it light. I don't want that gray graphite to be inside the light areas. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, what else I got to tell you? Oh, I just used a masking fluid from um, Holbein. They make this masking fluid. Oh, and I want to show you because people, people keep on asking me where I get all my Holbein products. And a lot of the products I get from Vermont Art Supply. This is their shop, vermontartsupply.com. This is where you get um, you can get a lot of the supplies I talk about in my in my um, videos here, and um, my supply list, of course, is this right here, the supply list, and I'm just putting it up there. So if you ever go back, you can look at it, and see what I'm using for colors, and this is the masking fluid. The masking fluid pen isn't available at the moment. They had a little bit, a bit of trouble with it, so um, they're going to get it back probably in time, but they're having a little problems with it, and so um, wait for it, and it'll probably come back in a little bit. All right, so let's get started painting here. And in a scene like this where um, there's a lot of dark, because it is a night scene kind of, I want to get the smoke in here, it probably would have almost have even been better to do it on the black watercolor paper that Stonehenge makes. But we're going to do it on the white paper, and I'll show you how to do it on the white paper. So we're going to be using a lot of dark, dark colors. But like always, we start out with the light colors first. We're going to start out with all the light colors, which is pretty much the background part here in this area. And if you look around here in this area, so he is pretty much in the dark. He's like silhouetted, and so is his um, grill. So it's the stuff that is around that that we're going to be doing. All right. 
and color wise, um, whatever color you'd like. And since there is no big sky, like we're doing a background, like a regular um, landscape, it's okay that you um, don't have it starting from back to front. You can start the foreground because the foreground is the light area. And so I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to get pick up some warm colors in my light area. And hopefully by that time, oh, look at how nice my palette looks. So all of you that are used to me, I, I don't usually rinse my palette because those are all good colors. But if you need a little spot where you're going to be using some really light, bright colors that are intense, then yes, go ahead and wipe it away. I just don't like wasting a lot of paint because this paint is really good that I use there. All right, so we're going to go in here and... Hey, Ann. Hey, Ann from Burlington, Vermont. Sorry I couldn't go there this year. I would love... I was close. I was up in um, New uh, Clayton, Clayton, New York by the Thousand Islands. Um, on the other side of New York, but that's about the closest I got to to getting over to Vermont this year. I couldn't go up to Canada because you can't go up to Canada, but I would have loved to have gone up to Canada too. But so here we go. Um, we're just going to go in here and don't worry about anything that happens into the into the dark area. Just worry about the light areas. The dark area will go on top of this. So have fun with that. Really nice wash. And I didn't wet the whole paper yet. I'm wetting it as I go along, so I can still flow my pigment, but as I go along. So I'm kind of um, looking for what color things are. And his apron is red. And so I can put that in there right now, even though it's not the dark part, I can put some of that in there right from the get go. And go right into his arm. His arm is dark, just like the background, but I'm gonna use like a little bit of flesh tone there, just because the highlight area then will be a little bit more with the flesh tones. His shirt is um, light on the edges, but it's just really dark later. so. I'm just going in here and getting the colors. I'm not getting the darks yet. I'm just getting the colors of things. Usually that's what you do with the lights. You're, you're getting color. And I'm kind of working this area, leaving this area alone, because what I want to do over here is get that smoke. That smoke that's coming up, that's going to be really fun. I love how Mary White does that with her a lot of her um, scenes where she does smoke. And it's just really awesome. So I'm going to try to try to copy kind of what Mary White does. She has some really great paintings in where she has the smoke and the, people, and the ladies cooking and fire is going. Uh, it's just amazing. So here we go. We're going to get some flesh tone in here. I'm using this um, shell pink. Shell pink and a little bit of my brilliant orange from Holbein. And again, don't worry about the darks. The darks will create the objects and shapes. I'm just looking for different colors that the people are wearing and just get them in there. All the lights, the light area. And if you need a yellow, make sure you didn't go outside first and make that green that yellow. I still don't have two yellows, one for mixing and one for one for the um, pure. Because that's what you really should have with, with um, yellows. So I'm just getting in here and looking at what some of these colors are. Nice warm colors. And I'm getting hard edges, but they're going to be covered up anyways with a hard uh, dark edge. And so I'm just getting in here. I'm going to use a smaller brush when I get near the faces because a little bit smaller. <coughs> hmm. Just going to have a drink before I... Ah, cheers, everybody. Drink some UFO still from, from, actually from New Hampshire. And so here we go with a little bit of warmth in the face. On a face, you usually could keep the um, forehead yellow. Cheeks are rosy. And the, and the chin is usually grayer. That's what we always learned in school about doing faces. Cheeks rosy, yellow forehead, yellow forehead, and grayer in the cheek, in the, in the chin area. That's why I knocked on the door. I locked it so then it comes in. <laughs> all right, so here we go. These are all the people's faces and Getting some warms in there, some warm colors. And this is all going to, my light source, look where your light source is. The light source is this whole area right here, and that's going to be blasting towards them. And so all this, all that light, and I did mask right off a lot of that light, so I don't have to worry about that. I just have to worry that the face on the one side is a little bit lighter, and as it goes over to the other side, it gets a little bit darker. But that's not the shadow yet. This is just the color of the light part of the face. And then this guy's got like a yellow shirt on. And this is going to be kind of more monochromatic because I am going to make it like warm reds and oranges. And then 
the cools will just be the blues. So kind of orange and blue type of colors and stuff. And, and then leaving a little bit of white because that'll make it exciting. Like back in, back in the part and here, I can show you this a little bit closer up. This back here is a lot of whites in there. I know you have it in the corner, but this is just a little bit bigger to show you uh, that those are light areas. And let's go into our, um, let's go into this area, get some of this. Just kind of just mess it up, you know, get, make it messy. I mean, this is a really complex painting, so I'm not going to get everything like it is right there. I'm just going to, I'm going to fake a lot of it in there. You know, just this area is a lot of light blue in there. So just put a lot of light blue in there. And then later on, when I do the darks, it'll create the shapes that are back there. You don't create shapes in the beginning. You, you, I mean, a little bit you do, but mostly you're going for the big, big colorful areas, trying to get the areas colorful and picking out your um, what color scheme you're going to be using of the lights, not the darks yet. That comes later. And every painting you do the same. It's the same thing over and over again. You got to get used to doing that. It's repeat, repetitive, but that's it's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> You want to get so good that you don't thinking about it and you just automatically do that. You just automatically go from light to dark. Now let's, I'm going to wet this whole area here. I'm going to see if I can get my smoke coming in here now because that's pretty much my light areas, my colors of my light areas. A little bit of yellow on him. And so now I'm going to come in here. If you have any questions, um, put them up on the side there on the side of the video and I'll come back to them later. Or even when I'm painting, sometimes I'll look up and just see if you have any questions. So now I'm wetting the whole area here. Wetting the area. And what I'm going to do, I probably should post on Facebook that I'm always doing these, but I forgot to do that. And so I wet the area. Now I got to keep the smoke light. And so what does that mean? That means I've got to go into the darkest areas. I'm going to use my smaller round brush because I'm going to use loads of pigment. I have a lot of water on here, but now I want to just take the darkest pigment I can possibly get. And I will, yes, take some black because it's the darkest of all the colors I have on my palette. But I'll mix them with blues and such and everything else and make it thick so that it'll not bleed too far because I might want the smoke, right? I want to say the smoke. And when I get closer to the smoke, I'm going to get a little bit warmer. Right now, this way over here is very cold. I made it very cool. I'm using blue, thalo, or primer. Um, what's that color? That is a Prussian blue. <laughs> and then we got a little violet, permanent violet here. And, and it's very cool color, right? And I'm just going to put this over the mascoid. So you can see the mascoid is repelling it anyways, so you can tell. And then over here, I'm going to start making it warmer. Put some bright red in there, right into the black, right? It's just, it's not going to make it red. It's going to make it more of a, a burgundy. And then I use it really thick so that it's going to bleed in and make that smoke. And then I can go back in with pure water and go the opposite direction and just kind of get that to look like smoke. And I'm using the pigment thick because I have a lot of water down here. I have a lot of water. And here it's coming right off the, um, closer to this area. Where the smoke is coming, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to make it really thick so it doesn't bleed too far. I need it to not bleed very far because if it bleeds and gets rid of all my smoke, then I have a hard time getting that back. I may have to use white paint then, but that's not what something you want to do right off. You can use um, white paint, but it looks better if you can use the white of the paper. It's brighter with the white of the paper. So here I go with the black. And in this area here, I'm just going to kind of go in here with a, with a neutral color. Just kind of making it dark over here. I didn't wet over this area, so I'm just going to stay right around this area here. And his face behind his face is kind of dark. I can make it warmer because, again, I want my area of center of interest to be in this area. And that's what you do in your center of interest. You keep things bright there, brightest colors, most contrast. I kind of went into his face too much, so we're going to have to take a little bit of that out of there. Paper towel, get some fresh paper towel. Hopefully the sound tonight is good. Um, please let me know if is it too loud or too quiet. 
Um, it's the only thing I always have the problem with with the video. I never know what, if you guys are listening to it and it's too loud or too or just right. I see the volume, but it's hard to tell that. <laughs> but see what you're hearing. <laughs> so here we got a little bit of yellow going through here. And then we're going to tone it down and kind of get a grade because the smoke, you know, can be gray. It can have a little gray in it. We eat, watercolors tend to be very um, gray um, deficient. We don't use enough grays. <laughs> we need to use a little bit more grays in our work. I know there's a lot of the good, good artists. They're using a lot of grays lately. All uh, the famous ones, the, the John Salmonins and the Mr. Z's. Um, they're using a lot of grays in their work. Neutral tints, I should say. A lot of them use neutral tints. And so it's a good thing. It makes your colors even more brighter. So here, I'm just going to keep on going in, trying to make the smoke look like it's coming through here. And some of the smoke has a little bit harder edges than other places. And so you just do that. Make sure you use a lot of paint. And if you want to tone it down, use colors that have a little bit of white in it or a little bit lighter in color with gray with a lot of pigment. You're allowed to use white or colors that have um, a little bit of white in them. And that way, it'll stop it and make it look like an edge but with a gray tone and see how I can make, I can make it look like it's going right around here, the smoke. And I just, I can make lines and everything. So it's nice being able to control your pigment. And I, last week when I was doing a demonstration or the um, workshop in Clayton, New York, um, that's one of the things in my workshops. You learn how to control the watercolor because we did spend two days of the workshop. Actually, the first day and a little bit of half of the second day, we learn how to use the medium and control it completely. We can't go farther unless you do know how to use do that. I mean, it's very important that you learn to control the amount of pigment compared to the water and so that you can make an edge. You need to be able to make an edge. And so that I, I normally teach that in the first two days and you have to learn it. And I've gotten to good enough to show people how to do that. And it's um, pretty much you will learn that how to do that because we don't go forward <laughs> unless you don't, unless you learn how to do that. It's very important. So here we go. Thanks. Thanks, Susan, for letting me know the sound is good. And so now we're going to go. And so we got that side pretty much pretty good. Pretty good. So I'm, see how thick my paint is? My paint is pretty thick and I can, it's still wet over here. And so it's being wet. That means it's just going to bleed a little bit. It's still floating and still going to bleed because it is wet, but it's not as wet as it was when I first wet it. And so now we're going to get a little bit, um, here I wet a little bit more, a little bit orange down here. And actually this, this thing is going to be darker. So why am I stopping right here? Because we're going to make this darker. So go right into this area, this little grill here he's got. And then down here, we're going to have some darks. It's just nice to get as much in soft edge as you can possibly get. It's just as a nice look if you can get things soft edged. And then in the smoke here, I'm just going to drop a little bit of um, water in this to make a little, um, what do you call it? Uh, they call those blotches. No, not blotches. Watermarks. <laughs> and so watermarks in the smoke can actually kind of look good because it kind of gives it that kind of like a little finger look and stuff. And so that's a good thing. Put a little water in there and let, let some of the watermarks make a little bit of the smoke come out. And also when it's wet later on, I could also put white in there and I can make that look like those little fingers with white paint too. So it's not a bad thing to use white. Sometimes it actually enhances your painting quite well. I just noticed that in the corner here, we've got some really dark darks. And if you've got some edges, that's fine too. Some harder edges. Here, the grill has a little bit hard. Ah, it's not that dark. I don't want to do that yet. That's going to be hard edge dark. All right, so let's get over to this side and get this side done. And I'm going to spill a little bit of um, water here to get some watermarks. I'm just going to kind of put some watermarks in here. Sometimes you want to use watermarks because they will give you that neat effect of a burst exploding. And even just tapping like this will give you a little bit of like the salt look where it kind of separates the water, makes it go out a little bit. So now let's go over to this side and we're just going to go in here. And we're just going to get this really dark using, again, peach black, Prussian blue, burnt 
um, permanent violet, maybe some of this midazolam brown, and very thick. I mean, I am using it super thick. And go right down by this guy's face, right by his arms, and you see how I can control it, the edge? I can control it right around. And actually, his head is in the um, in the dark area, so I want to make it a little bit light right there. I'm going to make it kind of blue in that area, so it looks like it's in the distance. So if you establish that some of those things back here are blue, then anything you put back there that's blue will make it look like it's in the distance. So that's a good way of uh, making things look like in there a certain area. You know, if you establish like this area right here is blue, the background, then anything you put back there that's blue will kind of sit back there. And I'm, I'm I am putting in my darks now, but it's still um, soft edged. I'm trying to make it soft edged darks first, in the big areas, big areas of dark. And you notice how much pigment I'm using. I am dipping into a lot of pigment because if, otherwise, if I don't, it bleeds all over the place. And just covers all my lights. You know, I don't want that to happen. I want to, I want to control it enough so it makes it look like there's things back there. Things are happening. There's a lot of stuff happening back there, and I got to control it. And like this shirt is uh, yellow, or kind of orangey yellow. And so I'm gonna go back in here and kind of just go around this guy's shirt. And now this is dry back here, and so um, I'm getting a hard edge, which is okay. I'm in my dark, I'm in my dark time, so that's okay. If I needed soft edges, I can also wet it right after that, too, in the area. But right now, I need to kind of have these two people right here. I'm going to go and kind of go around them in a dry. And now I kind of get rid of a little bit too much of that blue. So I'm going to take it, pat it out a little bit with, with a um, yeah, I should probably get another paper towel. That one's getting pretty dark. Oh, I got a little shine going there. I got to figure that out. Let's see if I lift it up a little bit. Yeah, that works better. Yeah, what can I put underneath there? there. Paper roll. Let's put that underneath there. And so then they get rid of that shine that you can so you can see something. So now we go back into the into this area here. Um, the lady has dark hair, and then there's a highlight on top of her head. And so I'm getting detailed now. It is my darks. I am getting in my darks, and so. Um, First darks were the ones that were farther back, and actually that's all light right by her head because her head is, um, she has black hair, so everything around her head should be not black. That way it'll pop out, right? So I'm going to put a little blue back here, stating again that it'll be the background, and right behind his head is actually the light, really light, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And so then uh, her hair is going to be dark later, so that's detail. His face is going to be dark, that's detail. Now his shirt is a bigger area, so I can go right into that. So yes, you are working a little bit tighter when you do something like this, but it's you start out with the lights no matter what, and then you go from there. You take it from the darks or the lights, which you kind of establish the colors, and now I'm going into my darks. And so you look around, what is the darks? What are the big biggest darks? Trying to look for the biggest darks first. And even though it's complex and there's a lot of things happening there, you can still take and make those complex areas look for the big patterns. Like this shirt and her shirt are almost like one. So anywhere I can do that, that's that's the that's a good thing. You know, like his shirt, her shirt are both in shadow, and I don't have to separate them. I can put them both together. The arm will be light, and so I can separate that. There's a shadow right here on their arm. And then his arm is dark against the light background. So I noticed that uh, this white area here um, can be put a little bit of that blue again, stating it again that it's in the background. So I'll put a little bit of blue back here. And see, I'm just doing kind of just shapes, just random shapes of dots and lines. And here, her front of her is a little bit lighter. And so down here, we've got some... That is actually... Let's see. He's got red shorts on and this is arm so a little bit of blue right there behind his arm you can pick up this painting in my newsletter or this photo in my newsletter i didn't get a chance to put it on my website i will try to put it on there either tonight or some other night i just hadn't i'm getting ready for my workshop tomorrow my three-day workshop and i'll be back on sunday so next week we'll be all back to normal i'll be doing it on thursday again my my 
my normal reg regularly scheduled program will be on Thursday and my newsletter will give the what we're painting next week again to paint along and again hopefully um, I know this one's a little bit more complex but it's always good to do do complex one because you get better you get better at it and you know it's a little tough for drawing wise but, but you notice um, put a lot of drawing or you know trace it trace it if you got a projector or whatever you do get the drawing that's number one for sure number one is always drawing no matter how you get it though just either draw it on with the um, freehand if you're good enough or get yourself a projector or go to office depot and get a copy made and then use some graphite paper or transfer paper and transfer it on there again we're getting darker here so we're going to try to do this in an hour we're going to this is a little bit more complex but we're going to see i normally do it in an hour so we're going to see how we go and put some color in there now this is dry but as i go along you see you got the hard edges as i go along i can always add water to it and then it becomes wet into wet and that's when i once it becomes wet into wet that's when i float my pigment good old floating your pigment that's number one you know getting it in there putting it down letting it do its own thing watercolor is such a neat thing that you can let it just go and do its own thing so this is all dark down here and here we have a little bit of nice orange red here not sure what this is in the picture i don't know what half the stuff is on this picture i can't tell it's just too too much stuff happening so does that does that matter no you just go ahead and do um uh, fake some of this stuff in there and then just um because this part is not important it's this guy with the grilling that's what we want important so that's what i'm gonna have to make sure that i didn't see that and if i can't see it i'm gonna make it up to where it looks good i hope <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go down here and just add nice darks in there. Here, um, I'm going to get back into the blue so it looks like it's in the background. This is foreground, and like I said before, I'm shifting this blue, and then suddenly it'll be the background. You know, if you can if you can do that, it then it automatically happens on its own. You don't have to worry about what's in the background, what's in the foreground. You just shift it to that color, and it'll make it automatically shift to the background. So everything in the foreground is going to be warmer, and so making it really warm. So I use like a reddish dark, and then I can use like a purple or black and put some red in there or anything that's warm. And then, um, and then I can also control the edge like that with a lot of paint. And so I can control a little bit of that edge. Here it's all, actually he's all in the dark here, so we're just going to go right in there. Now here we have a, a couple things happening there, so I'm going to go with a really dark dark black and permanent violet. I'm just going to go in here and just make some make some lines going across just to make it look like there's something happening. There. That's going to be a soft edge, so it doesn't really need to read like anything. It just needs to be a soft edge, and you can kind of see that there's something happening there. Like this guy's legs, and there's some kind of objects there. Here's his arm. I made his, like he's eating something. I made his hand, so it makes it look a little bit more like he's eating. And then... Um, this will be dark on top of that. This is, I still didn't give him his red shorts. So let's give him some red shorts here. This is like a little red. I know it's complex with the look and um, sometimes you may want to change things around. Or is that her? Oh, that's her dress. Oh, okay. Boy, that's kind of an odd thing. Like it's her body, but it looks like his, his body too. So. It's kind of lined up so that's kind of an optical illusion so in order to do with that you just put them both together and that way you don't know what is either so that you don't want to put your eye attention to something that doesn't look right always just stay away from that then just make it so that you don't notice it at all so here we go again with the um, dark now there's a little bit of dark by your arm here and then it goes to lighter right away because his shirt and everything on this edge is going to be light so that he, he will be silhouetted against that. So I'm going to go in here and make it a little bit lighter. I could go into his shirt, and I'm not sure why I'm not. Sometimes you just do that because it just seems easy to just to go right here. Okay, so this is all going to be dark. This is going to be dark. His apron is right here, real bright red. Let's make his apron around the front really red. His arm is going to be really dark. His apron is really red. All 
right. So while this is drying, that's kind of nice because I'll be able to take the mask off. And you can see the mask white. This mask white is really nice because it it, it, it kind of um, takes the pigment and just kind of lets it spread out so you can see the actual what you had underneath there. Some of the pigments don't retard the, um, the paint, and so you don't see that. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> it's not Thursday, but Tuesday afternoon is good, too. Now, her shirt is blue, so then that'll be nice because then you can put her in the background, too. And then she's got an apron too, so I'm gonna kind of negative paint the apron in there. It's dark right here. Now her arm. I'm gonna use my smaller round brush because it's trying to get a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of ooh, that brush. I didn't clean out way too well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of like flesh tone, reds, warms. I'm just gonna take the red here and just gonna go across it real quickly. And then she's got a bright red apron on also. So I don't have my darkest darks yet in a lot of these places, so that when you hit that in there, that's going to sh create shapes. And so you'll start seeing things the way they're supposed to be. Things will start becoming more clear here. He's in the shadow, so I'm going to kind of go in there and put his arm in the shadow. His face is actually in the shadow too, so we just want to put him back, push him back a little bit. And later we can go in with the dark darks and get that. So let's go into her... Getting to the point where we're doing the detail now. The large details, or the small details, I should say. Gonna go in this part, back of her neck. Nice and dark. There's her ear. And if I went slower, I, I could possibly get the looking even better than going really fast, like I'm doing. But you'll have time, you know, don't rush it. Just take your time and draw it in nicely. You don't need to rush. You need to just make it look good. And so to look good, sometimes people are slower. So it's not about the time you take. It's about the quality. You know, just get in there and learn how to do the right way. I mean, definitely do it wet in the wet and get your hard edges and learn all that stuff. But don't have to do it fast. It has nothing to do with it. Just go with a, your pace, your own pace. Here now I'm, I'm getting the side of his face, which is in shadow. And so things like this, you can look up in in the photo and just see, and just copy what you see in the photo. Now, if the photo doesn't look right or something's wrong with it, then yes, you have to change it. And that's where your drawing comes in good. You know how to draw it and know what to change certain things that are not looking good. In my newsletter today, I, I, I if anybody got my newsletter, it was about the camera kind of distorts a lot of things in the picture, and especially in perspective when you're shooting outside with a kind of panoramic view. And so when it happens, you got to change that. You can't use that because it's like not the way it really is. The way it really is is what you're seeing on the outside, not what um, you happen to see in the camera, what the camera sees because it's a fisheye. It's a, a lens is rounded, and so it's going to make some things distorted and rounded. So now we're going to go in here and I'll make up some things. Now this lady has a shadow right here. And see how all of a sudden when you start doing darks, how everything starts coming together. I mean, it, it you can show objects. That's what happens. You're showing objects when you're doing the darks. You create objects and things start to get explained. Like her face is in a shadow, so I can put her eye, nose, mouth. It's in the shadow, so then then it goes down and it connects right to her um, neckline here, and then the side of her blouse right here is in shadow. She has um, like an apron on also, so let's make a blue apron since it's in the background here. I'm just gonna kind of like put her apron on and just kind of go like that. This right here, I'm not sure what's happening in here, so I'm just gonna. Create a couple geometric shapes in there. And um, I can't tell what is in there, so it's okay to make it not, not readable in your painting, too. It's not that important that you have to be able to identify every single object in your painting. It's just that's stuff back there. That's all you got to say. It's stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so here you go here. 
anybody sign up for my Dillman's workshop, it's going to be for th with acrylics. And that's actually this week. The one I'm doing this week um, will also be acrylics. And so we're going to get in a little bit of the acrylics. But these acrylics, are we're going to be using them like watercolor. And so um, here we're going to put number 11, my favorite number. I know there was 10 on this jersey, but 11 is better than 10. So it's just one more. <laughs> so we put 11 on this jersey. Maybe it doesn't look as good, but it had to be 11. Okay, so we go in here. I put a little bit of violet. I'm going to mess it up a little bit with a little bit. So it's not so perfect. I don't want to make it look perfect there. It's the side. I don't need to look this area too closely. I'm going to push it off to the side a little bit. Right around this lady's face is dark, so it's... Um, I can, I can show the shape of her face by putting a dark behind her. And so that's a good thing. So you know, anytime you can do that, that's great. And so then it does his, it does get light here again really quickly for his shirt. So I'm just going to make it like a middle tone then. Darker than her, but lighter than him. All right. Let me, while this is, I think this is dry now, let me take a masking fluid off, or the, um, yeah, the masking fluid. I'm going to use one of these rubber cement pickups real quick. That way I can, um, when I have a certain color in my brush, I can put it in those areas. So I'm just rubbing this across it. Let's see, it just picks it right up. Make sure everything is dry, though. Don't do it while it's wet. It's a disaster if you do it while it's, while it's even damp. It gets everything dirty, and it may, defeats the purpose of putting the mask down in the first place. So this is all dry over here, so I can really quickly just get this off of here. Oh, that part is wet. This is right next to anything, so I'll watch that part. Oh, didn't even see that. So we'll take this. Oh, that's wet too. <laughs> okay, let's go over here. Is this dry? Okay. Here it's dry. <laughs> Ooh, that scared me. You don't want to wreck your painting after just all this work, and then you sit there and you just make sure everything is dry. It kind of, it kind of really messes it up and puts everything in an area that you didn't want in there in the first place. Get this off of there. Let's see. I can get this part. I think this is dry. His face. A little bit on his face. And these things will be toned down. You just need to keep them light so that I don't have to go around those things. You can still get that beautiful wash, and you can get that beautiful smoke that's there. The beautiful smoke has to be done large, and it has to be done wet in the wet. So you cannot go around these things while you're doing that and make them hard edge. That's why I use masking fluid. It's a perfect solution to the problem that watercolors have. you got to get a hard edge, and you got to make your big, huge, beautiful washes, too, at the same time. It's not cheating. A lot of people, uh, beginners, always feel that it's cheating using masking fluid. No, it's, it's just another way of using something in watercolor that uh, makes makes it better, makes it easier, makes it better. Let me dry this with a little paper towel. I can go back in that area. Oh, look at that! Ooh, look at that smoky guy over there. Isn't that nice? Of course, it's by the water container, so I'm constantly dripping on there. See. Watch your water container. I'm just going to leave that there. I will probably go over some of that because it's not dark enough again. Actually, there's some red in the photo. So I can maybe put that in there. So I'm not going to take this off yet. I'm going to take it off on my finger because I think it's right enough for that. Okay, here, I'm going to take it off. Make sure your finger is clean. And actually, some of this, some of this is still a little wet on the masking fluid, so then it makes it dirty. No, that's okay, because this doesn't have to be totally white, white. Okay, i got to leave that alone. All right, let's get back to him. So I'm just working my way over this way, and um, we're going to try to get this part over here done. How much more time do I have? Oh, seven. We've got uh, about 20 more minutes, so plenty of time, plenty of time, plenty of time, I, I hope. <laughs> so let's go over here and start getting some detail in here. Getting rid of some of the lights and making them something because it's sort of like the lights are really bright there. And it shows like shines through. And here we have a little color in this light. And this thing, I'm not sure what that is, a bright light up there. 
but if you kind of make it something and then put a couple of lines in there, it, it tends to look like just a light source from somewhere else. All right, so this looks like, I have no idea what this is back here. It looks like a bag of something. And so I'm just going to, again, fake it. There we go. There's a little bit of writing on it. This, I think, is masking fluid. It didn't come off. All right, let's go start with him so I can work this way. And actually, the um, the pillars or the the lines that are going down, they're blue, so they're light, but they're just a different color. So I'm going to go in there with a blue. I'm mixing horizon blue and peacock blue to get this blue that I would need. And it's back here a little bit. And again, like I said, anything that's back there will look blue, and it automatically looks that way, and it'll set it to the background right away because that's what's in that area, blue. And so anything I put back there that's going to be blue will automatically be set back. It's a very cool way of making things go back or forward and have the viewer see right away where that object is using the color to your advantage. Here, there's like a person back here. So making it a little bit darker. Now, the front of his face is light, and I did go into his nose, so I may have to put some opaque in there. But let's let's get some of his dark hair and now get in there with really dark darks and i'm gonna get a hard outer edge but inside i will float my pigment there's his hair so making it wet and you know when i get something wet i then go ahead and plop colors and such in there right away anytime there's a wet area i'm going to take a little bit of red that's shining from this side i'll take a little bit of blue because the blue is going to reflect in there too so you put a little blue in the back of his head and then um, I can use flesh tone, but it's so dark that it's just like it's just like any other dark. So you really can't tell. It's just a warm dark, basically. It doesn't have to be flesh tones. And it does have to be a certain value, nice and dark, because that sets it forward and gives it a silhouette feel. Now his ear can't be this light. You know, you can barely see his ear there. So it kind of comes around the front here. And so you almost can't tell where um, things start in his face. The front of his face is important that you get the drawing right and then get those darks in there nicely. But um, it is all together a light, a dark area. And then um, underneath his nose, it's really dark. And then the glasses will be part of that. And then underneath his nose is really dark here. I can maybe lighten it up just a little bit more on this side. So that's that'll be a good thing to be able to see more of the side of his face. And the top of his neck here is all dark. His chin. It's kind of strange how it's in there. So you have to work it a little bit. And if you got to use some opaques to get it to look right, that's fine. Use opaques. A couple things hanging here. There's a little bit of yellow on this thing right here. This up here, you can do some really dark darks kind of cutting through here. I can make, oh, I still didn't, still didn't dry that or take the masking fluid off in. Hold on. There we go. All right. Now the problem is, is that you don't want to get rid of the, um, of the smoke. So the smoke's behind there. So keep some of your, um, some of your values down like i don't want to make this a really harsh dark value because the smoke is covering it so you want to make the value you still want to put the dark line there but you make it really light light values so it looks like the smoke is covering that area and you're just seeing a, a tinge of what's happening behind that what is that light i'm just going to make that up there not sure what that is here we have a basket of some type. I didn't do his chin. I put it went away from that while I was doing it. Try to get areas done when you're going in there. Try to get get in and get out. His nose. He's got shadow for his eyes here. His 
chin shadow. Chin is in the shadow here. We got a collar. Oh, there's some masking fluid there too. All right, so that's getting close. Again, I will do a background a little bit darker also then. There's a little mask weight right here too. I didn't get off. See right there. I should leave it on there until the end. Oh, too late. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's get into his body now. Let's get this. I'm going to use a bigger brush, bigger flat brush. And let's get it wet to the side. Nice and dark. Outer edge is really dark here. Nice hard edge. Doesn't matter what color I use at first. I'm just going to get in there. Then I'm going to wet it. And then I'm going to create. I guess I use the purple. And so I'm going to go in there and create the shadows. And then I also add other colors. But I just need to get it wet and get the get the nice shadows going across his arm here. And then underneath is going to be really dark. Go cut around his arm there. And now let's get some dark colors in there, some beautiful dark colors, and just let them float. They don't have to be the colors that are the actual object's color. It can be just be dark because this is a dark scene, so you can go get anything you want in there. I do like to have that the most powerful dark yet. You know, I mean, you got this guy in the front here. He's got to have the biggest darks, the hardest edges, and most of the color in there. It's okay to put, throw some red and just really get it dark in there. And actually, his arm is really dark, too, and, and it's silhouetted. So we're going to go in here like this. And I'm going to do that after, though. I'm not going to um, do it right away because if I do it now, I can't get that to be soft. And so I'm, I'm going to do that by itself. I, I can wait for that. You're going to go from red to dark. And I'm not going to show the edge. I'm just going to put loads of pigment in there and then just let it be on its own. Let it get there, like a soft edge, because then it's all wet, right? Look at how he pops forward now. And all this other stuff is kind of gray and pops back. Isn't that great? So now we're going down here. And kind of, um, I can get the bottom of the apron there. I can kind of show that. I don't need to see the side. You almost can't. I guess you can see a little bit of the side. You can even wipe that out a little bit. But you don't need to see that completely. It's when you start doing pieces of objects that it really starts looking doesn't hold together it's best if you have things that you um come together as one now when you start doing pieces everything looks like it doesn't belong it doesn't belong in that area because it doesn't match whatever's happening right there now i'm gonna put a little bow in there later uh, holding his apron up but for now we're just gonna near the background we're gonna put some darks in there here we have Actually, that is really bright red. I'm not sure if I should even make that bright red. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it the way it is. Now I'm going to make this little handle here. Anytime something gets wet, then that's when you float other colors in there. I always look for the um, where you can float colors. Here, this is in the background, a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to go like this and make this a little bit lighter. I'm not going to use that red. I'm going to make it a little bit darker over here. Because I want to kind of show this to be a little bit darker against the front of this, like juxtaposition, the dark against the light just brings it forward. This is, it really isn't happening in the picture, but I kind of like how that's working, so I'm going to keep it. Kind of blur that out a little bit, blur it. Now let's do the grill. Let's do the grill. I'll work, work on his hand after I do the grill because that's still drying and I don't want to get in there. So here we had the. So the grill is dark, and so it's a dark blue, too. Look at that blue. That's beautiful blue. So I'm going to use some ultramarine, maybe some peacock, and then, of course, Prussian. See, I'm dipping in everything. So if I look, it looks like it goes right to about here, and there's a handle. So I'll go here. There's the handle. And I'll wet it, and I don't care what color I have in there. I'm just going to wet it and then just use whatever color I have so far. And then I notice that on the edge here, it's a little bit warm. So let's use some orange there. I get the edge of it. See, I can just put it really thick. 
it's okay to make it thick because it's wet. And now we're just going to go in here and start putting other colors that are from elsewhere. This red would go into that area right here from his apron because it's going to reflect. It's nighttime and it's going to reflect all that stuff. Let me get this picture a little bit closer so I can see it. And um, we have a bunch of things here that are dark, kind of just show. Then the grill itself has a bunch of little lines. I'm just going to kind of put little grill lines in there for the actual grill. And it looks like it's rotisserie, whatever he's cooking. There's a little rotisserie going here. I'll put a little, a little stick over this way. Looks like he's making some kind of animal. Maybe a chicken on the one, or duck, whatever he's doing. And so I'm just going to put this as the lighter part of the of the duck or chicken or whatever he's cooking. And then now that it's wet, what do I do? I put other colors, I float other colors. Even if I put a white or I put flesh tone, that's fine. As long as it's wet, it'll be fine. And the smoke's coming out there, so you don't want to um, go into some of the smoke area and then get rid of that. So you want to keep that alone. And if you do anything over it, you make it really light. So it'll still look smoky, but light. And so the smoke is kind of covering. Here we got the chicken. That kind of looks like a chicken. Here's the chicken leg. And it goes from leg to the thigh, to the breast, to the neck. <laughs> I'm getting hungry now. I think I'll have some chicken, make some chicken tonight. <laughs> this is making me hungry, this um this painting. So we're going in here. <laughs> and looks like he's got that on a rotisserie also. So there's a stick coming right out of the air. There's the handle. Make that really dark. And he's got also some fork thing or something. Maybe he's touching over there. I'm not sure. Looks like there's an there's another, something else over there too. Make that light because the smoke is covering that. So I'm going to take it and make it very light, whatever that is. Make it lighter on the side. Oh, that's a grill coming over the side back here. So there's like a little bit of a side side grill. So I'm going to put a little perspective on that. And so just kind of make that like the grill is on the side. And he's got the fork or the the skew he's putting through this thing. And then I didn't get rid of this masking fluid, so I'll get rid of that. <gasps> and that looks like it's a tank of something with some water. Maybe it puts it in there after it's done or puts it before it gets on there. Here we have some oh that masking fluid also? No, that's masking fluid too. I didn't get off. Take that off. It could be anything. Apples to oranges. And then there's a little bit of this and that and what's it call it? And just make it up. It doesn't matter. And keep it light. It's too it's too dark. So you just kind of tap it because it's smoke. The smoke has to cover that. And even where it's really light, I'm just going to go in there and just kind of tap a little bit of color. Or what you can do is also wipe out some of the lights. Like this white is a bit too harsh. So what you can do is take and scrub it. Scrub it with water and blot it with a clean paper towel. And you'll get a soft edge and it'll look like it's glowing. Now I can think, ah, oh, I keep on dropping droppings over there with water. And so I can't get this dry. <laughs> that, that's never coming off that water, that masking fluid. Oh man, we only got five minutes left. Hold on, let's see what we gotta get here. I get this masking fluid off, but it just keeps on going wet. <laughs> All right. Let's go over here. Here we're gonna put a little bit of some dirty water in there to just again get the smoke look. Some of the smoke, as long as it's light contrast, you can even put that in hard edged. It's okay. Here I'm gonna do a little shadow on this side. I may have to leave that the way it is because I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry and it's gonna be have to be after. Have I got my hair dryer here? Nope, I don't. It's probably in my gear. 
All right, so let's go back to his arm, get that done so we can get done here in five minutes. We'll get his arm and get nice and warm. Nice shadow all across his arm because his arm is in the shadow. But I want to make it a little bit different color from the rest so that it still looks like you can identify it, but it's in the shadow. See that? And now we got his hand, which is really dark also. You can get a copy of the drawing um, in my newsletter. So if you go to my website, there's a bottom, there's an archive of my newsletter. So go there and you can pick up the, um, in my newsletter uh, today, you can pick up this picture. And I will put it on, um, my, on my website soon. But um, if you want to get it right now or get it soon, you go, just go to my website and go to my um, newsletter archive area. And it'll take you to my archives of, these, of my newsletters. And it's in my newsletter of today. Number 272, I think, newsletter. You'll see the date today. What else we got here? Thanks, Judy. It's fun to be back, but I'm going away again. <laughs> and actually, in um, coming up in two weeks, I'll be back up at Dillman's, and then I'll be doing a um, festival, a plein air festival, up in um, Minnesota, up in Grand Marais. Minnesota, there's a big, huge festival, plein air festival I'll be going to. And uh, they're already putting together a website for that. And so I'll be posting that on my on my website also. And I just heard they canceled my Springfield workshop. But um, so that's going to that was going to happen in October or September, but that's not happening. But there will be one in Duluth, Minnesota. But I think that one is already filled up. So keep on watching these and just do these. These are, you know, just as good. Come on here and just um, try to try to paint with me. Usually on Thursdays, but today's is Tuesdays because I'm going to be away on Thursday this week doing a workshop. And now for some red in here. Get some colors here. Yeah, there's so much color on this side. So I'm going to put a little bit of color over here, and it can just be something that's in the background. It can be, I don't know what it is. It's just something. You can do the top of the tabletop here. And is this dry enough? Let me, let me just take this and see if I can't get that masking fluid off so I can clean it up over there. There we go. Close enough. <laughs> All right, let's clean this up this corner, and then we'll be done, right? we got two minutes. There we go. We're going to clean it up with a nice dark. There's some really bright red over here. That's cool. And it's not bad to take the picture and use some of the colors that are there, because it's there. And so, you know, you don't have to totally copy it, though. You don't have to totally copy the picture's um, colors. A lot of times it's fun to just um, use your own. And this actually here, watch, I'm going to show you how to use white. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wet this area here because this is um, a really glowing part. It's, like it's glowing with a lot of light in here, and I kind of messed it up because I didn't, I didn't, I went around everything. I'm going to take pure white. I use titanium white, which is the opaque white of the watercolor field. It's not gouache. It's just watercolor. It's Holbein's watercolor white, and titanium white is the opaque version. Chinese white is the transparent one. I'm going to take this like this, and I'm just going to drop it in there and let it float downwards, and it'll give the impression of light shining up there. And it's okay to use. Nobody's going to come and arrest you. It's not, it's not against the law. Not yet, anyways. And so we're going to go in here and... Just put a couple of lines in there. This is wet. The surface is wet, and it's going to not give me a hard edge, but it's going to give me a harder edge. And I don't want to make a hard edge anyways. I want to make it soft so it's glowing. And um, that's almost it. Let me think. Anything else? Let me look at it. From, oh, the front of his nose. I thought I was going to put a little white there, too, because I kind of went over his nose here. And so I put a little light there. Also, the rim of his glasses. 
He has glasses on, which you kind of can't tell, I think. Maybe he doesn't even have glasses on, but I put glasses on him. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a, on, the, on the rim. Wow, it sounded like a plane just came into my building. <laughs> All right, and so also what you can do on, the, on these round um, circles that I have messed mess up, wet a little bit farther, wet a little bit farther, just wet this area, and then drop some white in there. And we'll do the same thing where it'll just spread out automatically by on its own, and it'll give you that impression of um, this burst, like it's a little burst. So here, look, watch this. I'm going to wet it. Take pure white. Just dip it right there and just let it do its thing. Let it burst. It's nicer if you can do it with um, the wet and the wet, but there's times we can't, and just don't enter this into the shows that don't allow opaques. All right, and so you can also use this light blue, and because there are some blue things back here, I'm just going to a couple, a couple more opaques back there. And actually, sometimes you can use some opaques thicker, and it actually looks pretty cool with watercolor. When I do the plain air thing. I'm going to be doing a lot of um, thicker, almost like gouache-like works when I do the... So you can put a little bit of little dots here and there of a certain color. It's a little bit more opaque, but that's okay. It gives it a little nice look. All right, let me, um, let me see how it looks with the tape off, and then we'll be done. A little bit over by one minute, but hey, that's not bad. Let me take the tape off. And so next week I will be doing one on Thursday, and uh, hopefully we'll get it on the website sooner. Like I, I haven't been able to do that lately, and I'm sorry I've been only doing the um, plain air ones, the workshops, and so they're not really quite paint alongs. But hopefully next week we'll do another real paint along on Thursdays, and you'll get a chance to draw it up. But this one, go to my website and pick up the um, pick up the old um, archived newsletter, and you can try to get that. And let me just see how this looks. Put that right there and say everything's in order. <laughs> um, again, any questions that you still have or anything you want to have answered, just come back here and uh, put them down. And if you don't get it into the comments section, just put it into the, the comment section on Facebook or Facebook on YouTube. I will be putting it on Facebook later on also. But um, let me just see where my where's my mouse. Hold on. Where the heck are you? Ah, there it is. <laughs> I can't get out of here. <laughs> so let's put this at this. <laughs> okay. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching again. This was a fun one. Uh, a little complicated, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next Thursday. And um, again, if you want to show me this picture also, um, face, go on Facebook and post it on Facebook, and I would love to see it if you can do it. You know, if, if you feel it's not too hard. It isn't too hard. Just you saw how I did it. Just. Kind of copy that and you'll be you'll be good. So we'll see you later, guys. See you next week. Bye bye. Now.